Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let's call to order the Planning Commission for November 9th, 2009. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. Will the senior recording secretary please call the roll? Commissioner Adam? Here. Commissioner Fisher? Here. Commissioner Grumney? Absent. Commissioner Reynolds? Here. Chair Lunn? Here. Written comments, uh, excuse me, public comments this evening. And this is a time where members of the public can address the commission on items that are not on the agenda for this evening. And it looks like we do not have any public comments this evening. So we'll go to uh, written comments, announcements, and continuances of Mr. Town. Mr. Town, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do have one uh, bit of correspondence that has been provided to the Planning Commission with regard to an administrative hearing uh, regarding the Sullivan uh, property that occurred on October 22nd, uh, 2009. Staff is in contact with the authors of that report and will be responding directly to them uh, on that matter. And that's all I had at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Town. Will the Recording Secretary please call 6A, please. Hearing advertised as required by law is hereby open to consider agenda item 6A regarding case SUP 2009-70299, applicant Chang 101 Restaurant request to allow the on-site sale and consumption of a full complement of alcoholic beverages, beer, wine, and distilled spirits for an existing restaurant. Location 2024 East Avenida de los Arbolos. Thank you very much. We go to the staff report this evening presented by Mr. Chang. Good evening, Mr. Chang. Uh, good evening, um, Chair Lin and members of the commission. And for this request, the applicant is proposing to um, request the sale and consumption of full complement alcohol beverages for an existing restaurant, which is uh, Chang uh, 101 restaurant at the uh, 2024 uh, Avienda de las Arbolos. And this is a project location. We can see where the arrow is. And just uh, provide a little information. And the nearest um, residential properties to the south of that um, that picture, which is about uh, 300 feet away from the restaurant. And the other um, residential tracks to the east of Herbs Row, which is on the right hand side of your picture. And that is about six, uh, 650 feet away from the, uh, from the uh, restaurant. And what the applicant is proposing to do is expand the uh, previous approved um, beer and wine use to include a full complement of uh, alcoholic beverages from the existing restaurant. And the reason why this project needs to um, go before planning commission meeting because the co uh, municipal code requires that uh, any sale and consumption of a restaurant uh, of about uh, alcoholic beverages in a restaurant, if it's the restaurant, if it's uh, within the 400 feet of residential property, um, the project will need to go before planning commission for review and approval. And staff would just like to provide a background information for this project. And um, back in um, 1979, uh, um, the shopping center was approved, known as the Oak Brook Shopping Center. And in 1981, an a special use permit application was approved for the previous restaurant, Chen's Restaurant. Um, the approval was for the sale and consumption of a beer and wine. And back in um, September last year, and Chen's Restaurant was closed. And a new restaurant coming in in June of this year uh, on called Chen 101 Restaurant. And in August of this year, a special use permit application was filed to request a full complement of alcoholic beverages. And this is the um, location of the restaurant, which is the, at the corner. Um, the applicant is not proposing to make any changes to the exterior. and. 
And for the interior wise, this is uh, one of the pictures for the interior restaurants. Um, the applicant is not proposing to make any modification to the uh, interior. So they will maintain the same full configuration as well as the same um, dining square footage. This is another picture of the, uh, the restaurant. Um, for evaluation, as staff mentioned earlier, um, the restaurant is maintaining the same floor configuration as well as square footage as the um, previous restaurant. Therefore, um, staff does not believe um, the, the, the restaurant will generate additional traffic or uh, parking impact. And the alcohol beverages is an incidental use to, to this restaurant. And the previous restaurant does obtain uh, um, approval for BNY. And as um, staff mentioned earlier, um, the nearest residential area, which is to the south of this restaurant, is about 300 feet away. But it's separated by um, other um, stores in the building and the shopping center, as well as a parking lot, a driveway, as well as a perimeter walls. And the other residential track is to the east of this shopping center, which is about 650 feet away from this restaurant and is separated by parking lot, um, driveway, as well as the herbs row. And uh, it is um, in staff's opinion that um, based on the distance and also the location of this restaurant that um, there are enough uh, adequate buffet between the restaurant and the residential property. Um, therefore, the staff does not believe the, um, the request will generate and um, make any uh, impact to the uh, sur uh, surrounding residential property. And for the um, hours operation, um, the restaurant is with the hours operation are complying with the uh, existing shopping center um, hours operation, so they're not requesting any uh, deviation from the code. And for the environmental review, the project is exempt from secret review, review since this is a minor changes to an existing restaurant. Uh, and in conclusion, um, staff is recommending the Planning Commission to approve um, this project based on the findings and subject um, to the conditions detailed in the staff report. Uh, staff is ready for any question. Thank you, Mr. Chang. Questions for Mr. Chang? Thank you very much. Let's call our speaker in this case, uh, Mr. Johnny Lee. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Lee. Please state your name, your city of residence for the record, and you have 15 minutes. Uh, hi, my name is Johnny Lee. Uh, I'm from Woodland Hills, California. That's where we live. Uh, restaurant's been open for like six months now, and we have a lot of customer that used to be chance customer came back and asked, do you guys have a beer license, anything with liquor license? And she said no. And, they were kind of saddened, you know, because they didn't have one. And uh, hopefully um, we could get one today, <laughs> you know, get a pass today. Uh, I understand he used to have a full service bar license. That's what his menu said. And um, two of the workers works for me now, and they, they used to serve alcohol, um, tonic, gin and tonic, stuff like that. But uh, Matt couldn't find the anything with the full beer license, you know, full license for alcohol consumption. So I'm kind of puzzled, you know. I wish I wouldn't get one today. I don't think we're going to get sell it, but it's nice to have it just to, you know, if I ever plan to sell it, I could have the option like, you know, it's, it's available if you want, you know. That's it. Thank you. That concludes your comments. Questions for the speaker? Yes. I have, I have a question for you. Mr. Lee, you've had an opportunity uh, to, to read the staff report and agree to all the uh, conditions? Yes. Thank you very much. Th that's it for you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, uh, there's no other speakers in this case. We'll go back to staff. Um, staff would just um, like to qualify because based on staff's research, the original SUP, which were approved back in 1981, only include beer and wine um, sell. And for this case, the applicant is proposing to have a full range of alcoholic beverages. That's why um, staff feel uh, that the project should go before planning commission to get a review, um, since the previous SUP doesn't include the um, distilled um, spirits. 
Thank you, Mr. Chang. Questions of Mr. Chang? Thank you. Mr. Lee, uh, part of the proceedings here is that you have an applicant rebuttal, which we're offering for you now. Do you have any further comments that you'd like to present to the commission tonight? Okay, thank you. With that, we'll uh, close the public hearing. We have no speaker cards on this case. And uh, we'll go to uh, commission for comments and or a motion. Commissioner Reynolds. Thank you. Um, this is a restaurant that I was at many times when it was Chen's, and then um, through a committee that I sit on, we always have our year-end lunches there, and I was there in this past June for lunch, and I was very pleased to see that it was open again, and it's a very nice establishment. Changed around a little bit inside, but I think very nice. And with that, I will move approval of the SUP 2009-70299 with the findings and conditions as in the staff report, and good luck to you. Thank you, Commissioner Reynolds. Comments to the motion. With that, please vote. Motion passed 4 0. Congratulations, Mr. Lee. There is a 10 day appeal period. Will the Secretary please call Case 6B? Hearing advertised as required by law is hereby open to consider agenda item 6B regarding Case TTM 2006 70581 RPD 2006 70582. Applicant New Urban West request to allow a one lot subdivision of 0.74 acres and construction of eight townhome units. Location, east side of Herbs Road, 750 feet north of Thousand Oaks Boulevard. Thank you. And the staff report this evening is being handled by Mr. Rinke and Mr. Hadari. Good evening, sirs, to both of you. Uh, good, good evening, uh, Chairlon and members of the uh, commission. The um, the first slide is a um, aerial photograph, and it shows the the site on the east side of Herbs Road. And uh, with the arrow here, uh, I'll go I'll go around the site. On the west side of the road, there are existing townhomes. On the north side, there are existing apartments. Uh, there's an existing church on the east side, and then on the south side, some single-family uh, homes. The um, the property is in an area that's um, high-density residential, and it was um, it was uh, designated that in the general plan in um, 1970, and um, also um, in the future. Um, there will be a capital improvement project on Herbs Road, and uh, there will be new curbs and um, sidewalks installed. And, and then further south of the project, there are three large um, oak trees in the street that will be um, will will finally become outside of the um, be located outside of the uh, the street. There will be new curbs installed, and they'll be within planner areas. Uh, here's a um, photograph of the, of the site looking northeast, and uh, it shows the existing uh, apartment project on the north side and a portion of the church um, on the east side. And the, the property, as you can see, is um, sloped. It, it has a uh, grading of about, um, average grading of about 20%. And here's another view looking east. Shows the uh, church sanctuary up on the hill uh, uh, behind the site. There are some existing uh, pepper trees on the site, uh, very small ones, but um, no other um, mature trees that are to be preserved. And here's a view looking southeast. Um, also shows some some overhead lines that will be um, uh, required to be um, undergrounded. And as I indicated pr previously, the the site is designated as high density residential. That's uh, 15 uh, units to 30 units per net acre. Um, there was a six unit apartment project 
uh, approved on the site in 1978. Um, that permit expired and, um, and the project never proceeded. In uh, 1986, the property was rezoned. It was originally rezoned, originally zoned RPD 10. You 10 units per acre. It was um, up zoned to RPD 20, which allows uh, 20 designated units per net acre. Uh, the site is almost three quarters of an acre in size. Um, it has the moderate sloping terrain. Um, the proposed project is a two-story townhome um, project with uh, garages um, beneath the two stories, and the garages are located at the lower portion of the property. The uh, building has a step design, and that was to integrate it into the um, into the hillside. The building coverage is is at the maximum. Um, in the RPD zone, which, which for this multi-family project would allow a 35% coverage. The um, front yard setbacks um, are 55 feet. Uh, there's a 20-foot minimum, so they're, they're almost three times the, um, the minimum requirement. The rear yard setbacks are also exceed the minimums. They're uh, 24 feet, 15-foot minimum. And then the side yard setbacks, they vary from uh, 15 to 25 feet. And there's also a 15 foot minimum. The um, average um, the average height of the uh, building is 35 feet. And in the front, it's a little bit higher um, because it's um, because of the way the building is set into the hillside uh, with, with the underground uh, garage. The grading uh, requires an export of um, 6,700 uh, cubic yards of material, and that'll all be exported off-site. Um, it requires a townhome project of this size. It requires 16 uh, garage parking spaces, and that's uh, two for each unit. There are also um, eight outdoor parking space is provided, and these are provided for the guests. That's one parking space per, per unit. And the project complies with the residential plan development um, land allocation guidelines uh, um, for parking and for, for coverage. Here is a, um, uh, a slide of the, of the site plan. And um, Within the front uh, parking area, there's there's a um, full size fire department turnaround that's um, has been provided. That was um, required by the um, Public Works Department in order for the um, uh, trash truck to be able to um, come into the site and access the trash enclosure and and back up and then drive drive out um, in a forward location to, in a forward way to, to exit the, uh, the project. Um, the garage is located about 55, 60 feet back from the, um, from the street. And um, there's, there's additional driveway area underneath with the garage. Um, each unit has its own garage with, with a uh, roll-up um, uh, garage door. And um, also on the site there, there's, there's um, plentiful um, uh, landscape area on the uh, north side of the site in the front. And staff has included a condition to get some larger trees um, to match the large trees that are already growing along the street. There's um, oaks, sycamores. Uh, liquid ambers and uh, canary island pine trees. And then on, on the south side of the site is, is where the guest parking is located. Um, here is the, um, um, a rendering of the, of the front elevation of the building. And uh, down below is the, the rear elevation. Um, 
and uh, here are the site elevations, uh, east and west sides. The uh, building design, it's a contemporary Mediterranean architecture, and um, there are full and hip pitch roofs, uh, the stucco wall facades. There are one-story uh, patios at the rear of the building, and uh, two-story balconies at the rear, and, and then there's also a, a balcony in, in the front. There is a stone veneer at the base of the um, building outside of the garage. The uh, townhome floor plans have the living room and the kitchens on the first floor, and there's three bedrooms on the second floor. And um, as stated previously, there are two-car garages down at um, street level. And there are, there's an internal um, stairway at the rear of the garage um, in each garage unit for access up into the units. The uh, project is exempt from the um, California um, Environmental Quality Act. Um, it's an infill project. It's less than five acres in size, and it um, meets all of the environmental conditions for exemption. Uh, staff's recommendation is that the Planning Commission approve um, a tentative track map, uh, 2006 70581, and residential plan development uh, permit, 2006 70582, based on the findings and uh, subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. And staff is available for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Renke. Commissioner Reynolds. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Renke. Uh, good evening. Um, Looking at the plan, I was glad that you uh, said that you call, how can I put this, I had a lot of trouble trying to understand the plans because this one that shows the building, is it says north front, and I thought, gee, shouldn't that be east? So I think you did clarify that, that is, you're looking at the building, if you are really looking east, it's not north. Uh, that's correct. Okay. Also, I wanted to know what this, uh, it looks like when you pull into the property, you'll be going into a gated area to get to the garages. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. And that gated area, is that going to be like a wrought iron gate? Um, yes, it would be a, a painted black, black painted, um, a wrought iron type of material. Um, I believe it'll probably be um, either a roll-up or a, or a slide, okay. slide type design. So there'll be two gates that someone has to go through to get into the, their garage, the main entrance gate and then the roll-up, you said, garage within. That's correct. Okay. Um, and I was very glad to see about this turnaround area only because I know that one of the commissioners concerned, was concerned about traffic on Herbs Road and it being backing up and with that turnout area if there was a problem let's say this first main gate didn't open that traffic would not be stacked up on Herbs Road that there would be an area to turn into on the property itself correct that, that's correct okay that's all my questions thank you Commissioner Reynolds further questions Commissioner Adam thank you hi Mr. Rinke I actually have the, I, this is probably a question for Mr. Haydari Mr. Haydari do you know that what's the speed limit on Herbs in that, in that area do you know, I, I know? Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, I believe it's 35 miles an hour 35. on Herbs Road in that portion. Yeah. yeah, I was there Thursday afternoon, I don't know, about 3, 30, 4 o'clock, and I was struck, <laughs> struck not by the traffic, but I was struck, <laughs> struck by the speed of some of the people. Uh, not that anybody in Thousand Oaks would go over the speed limit, of course, but <laughs> there may have been a few errant cars coming by that seemed to be going quite faster than 35. And, you know, it's a wide open road, and there, there there wasn't a lot of traffic on it, but when I was there, it did seem that people were going a little faster than 35. But which brings me to my question slash concern, uh, and Commissioner Reynolds alluded to it. You know, as you're heading south down Herbs towards Teo Boulevard, and you, you, to get into the project, you'd have to make a left-hand turn. There's no left-hand turn refuge lane to do so. You have, so you have to stop in the middle of the road if there's oncoming traffic the other way, you'd have to stop. If there's no cars parked 
along the street on the west side, the cars coming down behind you could go around your car and proceed onward. If there, as I understand it, if there are cars parked, so you'd, you'd have to stop to allow uh, you know the person uh, to make the left-hand turn. So my question would be, um, you know, and I know that Herbs is eventually. I guess I have two questions. I know Herbs is eventually going to be widened. Do we have a timetable for that? And the second question would be, would it be feasible to not allow parking along that west side of the street uh, to prevent? And I'm just, I just, it seems like that's an in, uh, a decline. And as cars come down there, they pick up speed. And I'm just uh, concerned about a rear ender happening there. Yeah, you are correct that it's you know kind of a wide open street and it's much less congested after the 23 freeway got open so perhaps that's why there's an, an increase in cars you know going a little bit faster um, regarding whether there's a timetable for the urban road widening the project's nearly completed in the design phase but it's not has not been funded and so there's like a you know, several million dollar funding requirement for the project so you know it, it, there's a lot of factors involved and in, you know, stimulus money and everything, but it could potentially be several years out. Um, the applicant has cooperated very well, and their entire site design and their site plan works with the new widened road, and they're, they're offering the dedication to the city. Um, and I understand what you're saying about the lack of the center turning lane. It's yeah, all of Herbs and much of Hillcrest has that, although in many of the areas you're able to get around it if there's a car in front of you. Although that's not always a given, even on a two-lane road, because there could be another vehicle in the number two lane adjacent. Yeah, whether or not uh, we can add an additional no parking on the west side, that might be possible. I know the traffic engineer was looking at that, and in many areas on herbs, there, there's restrictions. And in that particular area, there is no restriction against parking, but nor do a lot of people use that area for parking. So maybe it's it's a type of situation where, and maybe it doesn't have to be for the whole length of it, but in that particular you know, few hundred feet where to accommodate for this project that could be done. Uh, there's, there's other factors involved, you know, notification and really have to study what's happening out there. Certainly it's all going to go away, or much of it, the on-street parking is going to be eliminated when the Herbs Road gets widened and all the bike lanes are put in and so forth. But in the interim, uh, maybe something can be done. I need to. We need to. Staff needs to confer with the traffic engineering on that and see what can be done. Yeah, that's what I would envision as an interim uh, measure, and just in that small area, uh, you know, where the cars could go around. I don't know if um, if that could be. Uh, would you, could you condition something like that on, on a project like this? Mr. Norman? Mr. Norman? No, traditionally that's something that the city would um, have jurisdiction over, so there'd be no need to condition it. You can recommend to staff to look into it, and I'm sure once they've done that, they'll come back to the commission with a report. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Haydari. That concludes our questions. Okay. We'll go to uh, Jan Sand, is our first speaker this evening. Good evening, sir. Please state your name and your city of residence. For the record, you have 15 minutes. And members of the commission, my name is Jan Eric Sand, and uh, city of residence is here in Thousand Oaks, California. Uh, really, what I'm here for this evening is just to introduce myself on behalf of New Urban West. I'm one of the project managers for New Urban West, and uh, just wanted to say that we're very appreciative of all of the hard work from city staff and everyone that, that has got us really to this point. Uh, we're very excited about the project and all the opportunities that it brings here in the city with new development and it being an infill project. Uh, at this time, we accept all of the conditions for the project. and. Uh, just want to say I'm available for any questions that you might have for us uh, regarding the project. And then I've also invited our project architect, Michael Morgan, uh, as well, for maybe some of the other technical questions that are kind of beyond my scope of knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Questions uh, for the speaker? Thank you very much. Mr. Morgan, did you want to present? Okay, you do have a speaker card here. Thank you for that. And we'll go to Faith Colt. Good evening, ma'am. Please state your name for the record in your city of residence. You Faith Holt and Thousand Oaks. Actually, I'm two doors down from that project at 100 Herbs, and I turned left there for the last 12 years 
I've had no problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy that they're planning on doing something like this. I think it's, it looks really nice and that area really needs desperately to be brought up. Um, my only concern, um, and I don't know at what point in your decision making this comes up, is the funding to finish the project because there's that project over on Hillcrest and Rancho that um, realtors tell me that they're priced too high. The city told me that I don't know what they, they're not. They ran out of money, so I'm concerned living two doors down from something like that. Um, and I, I don't know how the process works with ensuring that they have the money before they start building. Um, also, I guess looking at it now and being two doors down in a little old house, the, the impact of the building and the earth moving and all of that, because I'm experiencing that right next door. Um, they're building on Las Vilas. Um, so, um, you know, that's going to end and this is going to start. And so I'd like minimum impact. My kids walk to school down that way. Um, so that's basically all I have to say. That's my concern. Thank you very much. And we appreciate you coming down tonight. Questions for the speaker? Thank you very much. We go back to staff now. In, in terms of the uh, availability of funding, we th there are four or five um, projects in the city that um, had started construction that are have, um, have have are now on hold due to um, uh, financing um, issues, and um, we, we would hope that too that once the, the project does get started, that they have their um, their loans and their their financing in place. So that once they would start, they would be able to to uh, complete it without without any delays. And I and I would add to that, and I think the applicant pro can probably speak to that. But um, the co-developer on the project is the same firm that is constructing all the homes on Venture Park Road right now, and they're continuing to progress at a, at a good pace, and they haven't. Um, reach the same issues and financial uh, conflicts that the, many other developers have. So that might lend some assurance to, um, to the neighbor there. Thank you. Mr. Town. Thank you. And if I could just augment the comments with regard to the speaker's uh, concern about grading and truck trips. The design, as Mr. Rinke pointed out, is a step design which was specifically proposed to try to fit the building into the hillside with minimum uh, grading. So although there will be grading, it's less than what one would see if you did not have a step design. So uh, that was one of the considerations both from the applicant and from staff in reviewing this project. Thank you, Mr. Town. Any further questions? Great. Mr. Sand, this is what we call our applicant rebuttal, and we do have a speaker here tonight that had a question about the potential viability. Do you have anything that you want to add during your time here? Please restate your name and your city of residence for the record, sir. Uh, again, my name is Jan Eric Sand. Uh, city of residence is here in Thousand Oaks. Um, for the first concern for the grading, I uh, did want to mention we do work obviously very closely with city staff, so uh, we obviously will adhere to all of the mitigation measures for trucking, hauling, all of those measures when we get to that point in the future. And again, as far as the financial funding, uh, I can assure you, I can assure that uh, with the success of Oak Terrace Homes up until this point, we've only had sales for a couple of months now but uh, has sold out through about half of our first phase uh, so it's very enlightening and uh, just excited about the project here in this uh, in this great city I've, I've been here so I was about five years old so thank you thank you further questions thank you very much all right well we'll uh, with that we'll close the public hearing we have no speaker cards or statement cards and we'll go to Commission comments and or motion Commissioner Adam thank you well I think this project uh, fits the definition of the proverbial smart growth. Uh, you know, it's an infill project. Uh, it's the opposite of the sprawl that we've seen for so many years. It's surrounded by urban uses. It's compatible with the surroundings. The park's 400 feet away. The front setback's good, so 55 to 70 feet off the highway, which is nice. 
um, the height's okay. In fact, it's, it's nice to see an infill project come in where, where it sticks within the height and density parameters of the city. Uh, so obviously, I, I'm going to move that we um, that we um, approve this project. I would like to add that uh, the recommendation, though, that the staff just take a look at that parking um, issue, and perhaps uh, you know, interim uh, no parking on there could might prevent an accident in the future. And then, of course, as as Mr. Haydari said, the whole thing will be solved when the roads widen anyway. But as an interim. Uh, uh, thing we got to take a look at that. So I would move that we approve uh, Urban West uh, project uh, with all the numbers, TTMs and RPDs. We want to move staff recommendations. Yeah, and very good staff. comments to the motion. Yes, Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, I agree with uh, Commissioner Adam. Uh, this is a gorgeous-looking project. Uh, it's a right project for the right piece of uh, property. So happy to support it. Commissioner Reynolds? And I also will support the project. I think that it's great, uh, only eight units where it could be higher density. And I really like the idea of the garages underneath. And they're very large units, three bedroom units. And I thought 2,000 square feet. And I think it really fits in well to the, the whole land and everything. Um, I drive this very often as I live off of Rancho Road. And um, I, I really think it's a good use. I would very much like to see Herb's Road widen. I know there's always been a lot of talk about it because of the oak trees in the street and everything, but I think it's about time. Um, anyway, that's it. Thank you. I mirror the comments of my fellow commissioners. Commissioner Adam, further comments? Thank you. Please vote. Motion passed 4-0. Thank you very much. Congratulations. There is a 10-day appeal period. Uh, Community Development Department re reports and referrals. That has your name on it, Mr. Town. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On page 50 of your packet are the upcoming uh, hearings that we have scheduled. We have two hearings scheduled for November 23rd. And then as you can see, we have uh, currently four cases scheduled for December 14th. That's on page 50 again of your packet on page 52 are city council items that have been heard or will be heard uh, by the city council including the walsh case which was considered by the council on october 27th and the council granted that appeal uh, another case which is coming up on appeal is the uh, wireless site at uh, Westlake and Skelton Canyon, which will be heard by the City Council on December 15th. And those are the only two that we have scheduled at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Town. Motion for the meeting minutes of October 26, 2009. Commissioner Reynolds. Move approval of the minutes of the October 26, 2009 meeting. Comments? Please vote. Motion passed 4 0. AB 1234 reports by any commissioners? Negative for the record. Commission comments? Commissioner Reynolds? Thank you. I would hope with um, uh, Wednesday being Veterans Day that uh, the community would attend the different events that will be happening around our fair county and especially the military order world wars we be having a program at the Caneo Creek Park North at 10 o'clock in the morning and it's always a really nice program with music and I think that uh, since my son's a Marine I always push these things and I really think that it'd be nice to see the community turn out at any of the events that will be around the community and remember our veterans that uh, we live in this wonderful world because of them. Great comments, and there there are events all over the county, and we enjoy this special lifestyle and then living in this great city because of the sacrifices of all those men and women who serve in the various capacities in our uniform and our armed services. So we respect them and uh, we honor them coming uh, coming this week. And with that, uh, I'd like to thank all city staff, our city attorney, Mr. Norman, our police department, and we'll adjourn back here. We'll adjourn this evening, and we'll come back here on November 23rd at 6.30 p.m. Good evening.